This is part one of the back to school crafts. Number one, customize a notebook. This is really fun and easy to do and you'll be able to make something that you use daily yours. Start out by laying out some newspaper to cover your surface. This is so that when you use the watercolors, it won't bleed through. Yes, we'll be using watercolors to make the cover of the notebook. You could use any other medium you'd like as long as it looks the way you want it to look. Take plain pieces of printer paper, then trace a rough outline of your notebook size onto the paper. This gives you a rough guideline of how much surface you need to paint. Be sure to make a front and a back for your notebooks. This is also a great way to customize any little notebooks you have for personal use. If you are using a Mead composition notebook like the one shown here, then you can use a whole piece of regular printer paper. Now I am using Crayola watercolors again. Don't let the cheapness of Crayola fool you, they are still very good watercolors. You want to pick out a color scheme for your notebooks. Don't use contrasting colors like red and green, which is one, very Christmassy, and two, you will end up with a lot of brown on your notebook, which is probably not what you want. I recommend choosing colors that are next to each other in the color palette, such as pink, purple, and blue, or red, orange, and yellow. As you can see, I'm sticking to pink, purple, and blues. You want to have a water cup handy, several brushes, and a paper towel to dab off any extra water. Make splotches of the colors on the page and use some water to spread it out. It doesn't need to be perfect. There is no right and wrong with how you arrange the colors, just arrange them in a way that you see fits. Also, if you don't understand my instructions in the video, you can also go onto my website at lilystudio.net and look for more detailed instructions. Most of the time, if there is a digital copy of the instructions, I will put the link in the description of the video. When you are done painting one piece of paper, let it dry, then move on to the next. When all your pieces of watercolor have dried, it's time to glue them onto the notebooks. Use a glue stick and apply glue to the notebook, not the paper. You want to apply the glue to the notebook because the paper is going to be bigger than the notebook and you don't want any extra glue where you don't need it. Press the notebook down onto the paper. There will be wrinkles on the notebook cover, but don't worry and try to smooth them out. Found that the best ways to do this is to use your fist and push the pockets of air in one direction to flatten them. As you can see, there are now a lot less air pockets than where there were before. Fold the extra parts of paper over the notebook cover, then use your glue stick to glue them on. You may have to cut a little slit where the notebook spine is so that the paper can get glued down. Trim off the extra paper where the notebook spine is. Now repeat this for the back side of the notebook. Again, start by apl applying glue to the back of the notebook. For smaller notebooks, cut out a rough shape that you drew prior to painting the paper. See, I told you you should have drawn it. No, I didn't. For smaller, especially spiral notebooks, you want to make sure that the watercolor paper is exactly the size of the notebook cover. 
Does this say you don't end up covering the spiral part of the notebook? Glue the fronts and backs onto the front and back cover of the notebook. Once all the parts are glued onto the notebook, let them dry for a while. This secures the bond between the paper and the notebook. To seal the notebooks, use tape. I recommend using a thin, clear packing tape instead of the thick type. Cut a strip of tape slightly longer than the length of the notebook. Place the tape down onto the notebook and fold the edges over onto the other side of the notebook cover. Repeat this until you have the entire notebook cover covered with tape. The best way to prevent air bubbles from forming from the tape is to lay the tape down on one side of the notebook, the top or the bottom, then you stretch it out and pull it tight. Then use your fist to smooth the tape down. If you have a notebook that is not a spiral notebook with a spine, such as a composition notebook, place a strip of tape on the spine of the notebook and smooth it down like you would smooth down any other strip. Now that you have notebooks to use, you obviously need something to write with. We're gonna be customizing pencils. Yay! This is probably the easiest thing you could do to customize your school supplies. Start off by using masking tape to tape off any parts of the pencil that you don't want to get paint on. This can be done with regular wooden or mechanical pencils. Just be sure that the pencils you are using do not have any extra weird parts hanging out of them that will get clogged with paint. As you can see, I'm using a small bit of masking tape to tape off the metal ends of wooden pencils. Next, you want to paint a nice base coat for your pencils to go on. Normally, this would be done with something called gesso, which is a paint primer, but if you don't have gesso, you can use regular white acrylic paint, which is what I am using here. After one coat, the paint is still really transparent, so you want to paint another coat to be on the safe side. You also have to get really creative on how you let these pencils dry. I used a laundry hanger that is used to hold socks, but you could honestly use a lot of clothes pins and some hair ties. Once you have used your creative invention to let your pencils dry with the base coat, it's time to start decorating. This is the really fun part. There is honestly no limit on how many possibilities you could paint these pencils with. Some of few ideas are just ombre, stripes, and polka dots. You could do so much more. If you decide to do an ombre, then make sure that the two colors are very similar so that you don't end up with muddy colors in between. That does not look nice. Once you have the primary main colors of the pencils painted, then you feel free to take off the extra tape. You can apply more tape onto parts of the pencil that you don't want paint on. It's honestly really satisfying when you peel away the tape because it's so smooth and such a clean edge. Once your pencils are completely painted and you're completely happy with how they look, it's time to place a varnish over them. Now obviously this step is optional, but I prefer to do this because I don't like the feel of paint against my hands and also I don't want the paint to be chipping off the pencil. Now for this mechanical pencil, I'm placing a little bit of masking tape on the eraser end in order to hold it while I paint the pencil. Now that you have varnished and sealed your pencils, it is time to put them all back together. But this is only for mechanical pencils. You can't put a wooden pencil back together, I don't think. So you're going to take the lead and then put it back into the pencil and put the eraser back on. Now, I didn't tell you this at the beginning, but you could obviously tell I did it, right? And this leads us to the third DIY. You obviously need a pencil pouch to store all your 
I don't know, stuff in. Start by taking one piece of fabric for the lining and one piece of felt for the inside. Now, you can use two pieces of fabric, one for the lining and one for the outside. Also, red flag alert, before you cut your shape, you want to find a Ziploc bag. Now, what does a Ziploc bag have to do with making pencil pouches? You're going to be using the zipper part from the Ziploc bag as the zipper thing for your pencil pouch. I also recommend using a Ziploc bag with two of those zipper things instead of just one of them, as you can see from my lovely demonstration here, because two is more sturdy than one. Duh. And make sure that one side of your fabric lines up to the length of the zipper thing. Now you can see that I'm threading white thread, but this is actually useless right now because you're actually going to need a thread color that matches with the outside fabric or felt of your pencil pouch. Now I've got my purple thread and I'm threading another needle. The white thread will come in handy though. So don't lose it, or whatever. Now I am being extra picky and trimming the fabric so they're exactly the same size. You obviously don't have to do this. But if you're a perfectionist, then do it. Once you're done making your pieces, Perfect, then fold the piece in half and sew along the fold. This will make sure that the two parts, the outside and the lining, don't end up separating, which is weird. Now, the obvious way to make sure that you're actually sewing along the fold is to use a fabric marker or a marker to mark out the fold on the inside or the lining, not the outside because that looks weird. I am using a back stitch to sew along the fold, and if you don't know what a back stitch is, you can Google it. Ew, look at that magic trick. I'm finishing up sewing along the fold, then I'm going to tie a knot to fasten off. Cut the thread, but don't cut it too short to avoid the thread unraveling. Now, you can use a sewing machine to do this, and I would probably recommend it because it's a lot quicker than hand sewing, but sew along the two short ends of the thing. Now it's time to be a perfectionist again. Trim up the short sides and the long side so that the pieces are exactly the same size. Now that you've made the edges absolutely perfect and in line with each other, it's time to decapitate a Ziploc bag. Not sure decapitate is the right word. As you can see, I turned the zipper thing inside out because the pouch is also inside out and when you sew it, it's going to be inside out. So that way, when you turn it right side out, it's going to be right side out and then you're going to be able to zip the thing up. Does that make sense? I hope well, so. Hopefully you can see by my lovely demonstration here that I sewed the zipper thing in between the layer of fabric and the felt layer. So I'm putting masking tape around the edges of the felt so that I can paint the zipper thing so that it isn't clear. I'm choosing a color scheme that matches with the pouch color and it makes sense together. P.S. This does not have to be a solid color. Mine is going to be an ombre as you will see later. Now this is a tiny notebook that I have customized, and this is the pencil pouch that I was telling you about. You can add any design on it to make it cohesive. Oh look, we're gonna test out the supplies. Oh, and be sure you subscribe.